Hello students. In this topic, we are going to study the introduction of green chemistry. We will see what exactly green chemistry is and how we can apply it in our daily lives. So we all know that everything is made up of matter and the way we use it affects our environment. Let us see how green chemistry impacts our environment in making the world a better place. An ideal chemical reaction should have a number of attributes such as safety, simplicity, selectivity, high yield, energy efficiency, use of renewable or recyclable raw materials and reagents. Absence of hazardous byproducts or at least minimizing or containing them. So, now whenever we do a chemical reaction, we need to make sure that certain criteria are fulfilled. Firstly, the reaction should be safe to do. The safety of the reaction is very important. It should not hurt the person who is actually performing the reaction. Second is simplicity. The reaction should be simple enough to do. There should not be a lot of complexities or complications in it. Third is selectivity. Now what do we mean by selectivity? Selectivity means that a person who is doing it should select certain reactions which have proper attributes. The safest reactions or the most simple reactions. Fourth is high yield. Whenever we perform a reaction, it is to yield a purpose. That means most of the reactions are performed so that we get certain products out of it. It is very important for us to have high yield. That means the products should be of high quantity. Next is energy efficiency. It should not consume a lot of energy. Now energy can be in many forms, it can be light energy, heat energy, electricity but the amount of energy consumed by that particular reaction should not be very high. Next is use of renewable or recyclable raw materials and reagents. The more renewable substances we use, the more recyclable substances we use, substances which can be renewed, which can be recycled easily, such substances will help us in making the reaction better. And next I have is absence of hazardous byproducts or at least minimizing or containing them. Now there are many byproducts which are not good for the environment, which are not good for the living organisms for the humankind. Some of them are very hazardous that means there are certain gases even when we inhale them they affect our body. Some of them are not that hazardous but they impact the overall environment. When we do not have any other option and we know that we will have to perform this particular reaction and there will be certain hazardous byproducts, then it is our responsibility to make sure that we minimize those byproducts or at least contain. What do we mean by containing the byproducts? That means make sure that the byproducts are well, the byproducts are there inside certain place and not just let out in the environment or the atmosphere. In practice, it is impossible to achieve all these attributes simultaneously. It is not possible for us to have a safe reaction which is also simple, which also gives high yield, which also uses recyclable raw materials, which will again not use a lot of electricity or any other kind of energy plus will not give hazardous byproducts. It is almost impossible to have such a reaction. Indeed, it is challenging for chemists and engineers to identify environmentally preferable reaction pathways that optimize the balance of all desirable attributes. Of course, all the scientists, all the chemists throughout the world are trying to get as many attributes as possible with a single reaction to make sure that the pollution is less, the usage of energy is less 
and the entire reaction is happening properly, simply and with safety. The concept of green chemistry was coined by Paul Anstess of America. He enunciated 12 principles of green chemistry in 1994 towards ideal synthetic methods to save natural resources. Now, this scientist Paul already had foreseen if we start doing green chemistry or we start giving green reaction, that means better reactions, it will save the natural resources as well as the environment. And thus, he coined the term green chemistry in the year 1994 itself. Green chemistry is the use of chemistry for pollution prevention by environmentally conscious design of chemical products and processes that reduce or eliminate the use of generation of hazardous substances. What do we mean by that? When Paul gave us the 12 principles of green chemistry, what did he try saying was, it is a chemistry for pollution prevention. It helps us to prevent pollution. How can we prevent pollution? By designing our chemical products in such a way that they are environmental friendly or environmental conscious and processes that reduce or eliminate the use of generation of hazardous substances. Now there are many hazardous substances, but generation of these hazardous substances should be eliminated or at least reduced to a certain extent. Thank you.